Welcome back, little ones. Welcome back, family members. Glad we all can make it back to another glorious day that the Lord has made. We're going to get right into prayer. I love you all with the love of the Lord. I hope you all tell your loved ones that you love them. Tell Father, great Father God, first thing in the morning, let them know you love him. That you appreciate that you woke up this morning. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Give him all the praise because he's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. I love you all with the love of the Lord. And God loves you more. Hi, little ones. Hi, family members. Let's get right into prayer. Good morning, Father God. Hallelujah. Another glorious day that you made. We're rejoicing. We're glad in it. Thank you, Lord, for another day. We got a chance to get it right. If we got it wrong yesterday, we can get it right today. Hallelujah. Every day we strive for holiness, holiness only. We thank you, Father God, for you being who you are. You are our Father, our Heavenly Father, creator of the heavens and the earth. You created each and every one of us. You created everything that we see. Everything was made for you and by you, and it's made for you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. We thank you. Thank you for your outstretched arm. Thank you for your grace, your mercy. Not for your grace and mercy, we would not be here. Thank you for your long-suffering and not easy to anger, traits that we all need, hallelujah. Thank you, Father God, for the gift of your only begotten Son, the blood of Jesus, for the remission of our sins, paid in full. Though we know we need to work on our own salvation, in fear and trembling of the Most High, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we thank you, Father God, for your holy angels that watch over us all day, each and every day, even while we work and play, and while we're at rest as well. We thank you, Father God. We know that your holy angels watch over us while we sleep. And they fight that good fight of faith. Thank you for your holy angels, Father God. Thank you, Father God, for the gift of the Holy Spirit that guides us to all truth, that walks with us, talks with us, teaches us, with words in our mouth. Speak to us, you know. When there are words that need to be said and uh, we don't know what to say, the Holy Ghost speak to us. Gives it, put your words forth, Father. And we thank you for using us. Use us for your glory. Be it. Everything I do is for your glory, Father God, and your glory alone. Hallelujah. And, uh, may we all win souls for Christ Jesus. May we all strive for holiness each and every day. We thank you, Father God, for uh, your grace. Thank you for another day. Hallelujah. And Father God, thank you for you being a majestic, holy, pure, righteous God that you are. You're awesome in all your ways. All your works are wondrous. The works that you do for the children of men, wondrous works. You know, miracle. You're a miracle worker. You're a healer, provider, protector, deliverer. King Jesus, hallelujah. The greatest physician. The greatest physician. Doctor, lawyer. A holy, pure, righteous God. Knowing no sin. As though the holy, pure, righteous life was given for us to have life. Our life don't belong to us. Thank you, Father God, for our life. We earn nothing, but we're so very grateful. And every day, all day, may we always give you thanks for any and everything that you do, have done, and will do. Be cautious for nothing. But everything in prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, make your request be made known unto God. Hallelujah. I believe in that and receive that in Jesus' mighty name. Father God, thank you. And Father God, we know that what is to come is supposed to, is to come. There's nothing that we can do to change things except prayer. Prayer. Yes, prayer changes a lot of things. It really does. Prayer of the righteous availeth much. So let us all continue to pray, to pray, to pray for one another, pray without ceasing. Let us all pray. Stay prayerful, please. Lift your children up in prayer. Lift your children up in prayer. Teach your children how to pray so they're not vulnerable. Parents, wake up. If you're not awakened, please awake. God loves you. He, I love you, but he loves us all more. He loves you more. Let us love. Love, forgive. Not only forgive, forget. Forget. And uh, I love you all with the love of the Lord. Thank you, my Father. We, we love you so very much, Father God. We love you. We honor you. And Father God, 
We ask to have the protection around all the listeners and all those in the body of Christ, all our family members and loved ones. And uh, we plead the blood of Jesus over all the listeners, all those in the body of Christ, our family members and loved ones. And Father God, we know no weapons formed against us shall prosper. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Anything that tries to come up against us to block our prayers, Father God, anything you give to your children, we receive it. We, we thank you for it. First and foremost, we receive it in Jesus' mighty name. And anything that tries to block our blessings, to block our prayers from going forth, to block this video from going forth, to come up at us, come up at us as an adversary or to accuse us, falsely accuse us or anything of that nature, Father God, we rebuke them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. We overtake them, bind them, and cast them out to a place they'll never return. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let this video go forth. And Father God, may you open, a, open up the heart and the, the hearts and the minds of the listeners, Father God, so they receive you and receive this message for those that you want to receive it, Father God. And for those that haven't given their life to you, we pray you this day that they op you open their hearts and their minds and they receive you today, Father God, and that they don't let time pass them by. We don't have time. We thank you, Father God. We can't say thank you enough. We're grateful to you and for you. We're grateful for any and everything that you do, have done, and will do. We love you. We honor you. We praise you. We worship you. We exalt you. God bless you, Father God. We praise thy holy name. You're worthy to be praised each and every day, all day. We glorify thy holy name. To God be all the honor, praise, and glory. By the way, you're greatly to be praised, Father God. We love you with all our, every member of our body. We love you with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. We belong to you and only you, Father God. We say use us for your glory, your glory alone. And we love you with an everlasting love. We'll never forsake you. And we seal this prayer to you, my Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, with an holy kiss. And it's in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, that we pray. Amen and hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us not stop there. If you have the opportunity, if you haven't given your life to Christ, please give, him to you to, give it to him today. What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Don't wait another minute. Don't wait another second. We're not promised tomorrow. Many haven't even wakened, haven't opened their eyes today. They are fully asleep. They're asleep. Where will they open their eyes? We pray that all have given their life to Christ so that they don't open their eyes in hell. And I pray for all to come to the truth. Well, have you heard the good news? If you have the op you have opportunity right here, right now to give your life to Christ, don't wait another minute. Have you heard the good news? The good news is Jesus Christ. He's coming back. And he's coming back for a spotless, blameless, unblemished bride. If you are ready to do what is right and accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then say this prayer. Not just say it, mean it from your heart. That you're going to truly accept him to come into your life and be your Lord and Savior. Say it from your heart. Mean it from that you're going to receive him. And you're going to seek him with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And sincerity and truth. If you are ready, then say this prayer. I pray to you, Jesus Christ. The Son of God. I am sorry. And please forgive me for my sins against your word. I believe you died on the cross and shed your holy sinless blood and was risen from the dead three days later after being crucified. Help me to seek eternal life, live a life of holiness. A life pleasing and acceptable to you. Help me to study your word. And obey it. And repent daily. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Father God. Amen. Now please. Repent for your sins. That means you're going to turn from your wicked ways. You're not going to do what you've been doing. You're going to stop. You're going to strive for holiness now. And after that, you, and 
You are to be baptized down in water in the name of Jesus Christ. You're going to read your word daily. When I say your word, I'm talking about God's word, the Bible, the Holy Scripture. You're going to read it daily. Go down on your knees in prayer and cry out to him. Seek him with sincerity and truth. He know our hearts. He'll, he'll answer. He has a personal relationship with each of his children. You know, like you said, my sheep know my voice. The sheep know the shepherd's voice. So, he have a personal relationship with his children. And your walk with Christ, where your walk is a spiritual walk, it is a strive for holiness every day, right? We all make mistakes, that's okay. We get back up. When we fall down, we get back up. We're striving for holiness. We will make mistakes in these in these uh, fleshly bodies, but we're going to strive for holiness. We're not going to purposely sin. And your walk with Christ is a personal relationship. It's not a religion. It's a personal relationship and commitment and love between you and the Father. Hallelujah. God bless you in your walk with Christ. Those of us in the body of Christ welcome you. Welcome to the body of Christ. May we all edify one another, pray for one another, pray without ceasing, fast, bear one another's burdens, love and charity, because it covers a multitude of sin. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And again, welcome my new brother and sister in the body of Christ. We love you. We're going into scripture. We're going right into scripture. We are on the Lord give me this morning, Colossians. So I'm just going to read it. There's four chapters to it. The Epistle of Paul, the Apostle to the Colossians, chapter 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, and Timotheus, our brother, to the saints and faithful brethren in Christ, which are at Colossae, grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you. So as we heard of your faith, in Christ Jesus, and of the love which ye have to all the saints, for the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, whereof ye heard before of the word of the truth of the gospel, which is come unto you as it is in all the world, and bringeth forth fruit as it doth also in you, since the day ye heard of it, and knew the grace of God and truth. As ye also learned of Epaphras, our dear fellow servant, who is for you a faithful minister of Christ, who also declared unto us your love in the Spirit. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you, and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will, in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might, according to his glorious power, unto all patience, and long suffering with joyfulness, giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness, and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature, for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in the earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions, or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself. By him, I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. And you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. If ye continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which ye have heard, 
in which was preached, in which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am a minister, and made a minister, who now rejoice in my sufferings for you, and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ in my body, in my flesh for his body's sake, which is the church. Go again, who now rejoice in my sufferings for you, and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ in my flesh, for his body's sake, which is the church, whereof I am made a minister, according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you, to fulfill the word of God. Even the mystery which hath been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of his mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory, whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom, that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus, whereunto I also labor, striving according to his working, which worketh in me mightily. Chapter 2. For I would that ye knew what great conflict I have for you, and for them at Laodicea, and for as many have not seen my face in the flesh, that their hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love, and unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding, to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God, and of the Father, and of Christ, in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. And I say this, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words. For though I be present in the flesh, yet am I with you in the spirit. Go again. For though I be absent in the flesh, yet am I with you in the spirit, joying and beholding your order and the steadfastness, steadfastness of the faith in Christ. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power, in whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, and putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who hath raised him from the dead. And you, being dead in your sins, and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a shoe of, him, of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Let no man therefore judge you in meat, or in drink, or in respect of any holy day, or of the new moon, or of the Sabbath days, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. Let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility and worshipping of angels, intruding into those things which he hath not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind, and not holding the head from which all the body by joints and bands, having nourishment, ministered, and knit together, increased with the increase of God. Wherefore, if ye be dead with Christ from the rudiments of the world, why, as though living in the world, are ye subject to ordinances? Touch not, taste not, handle not, which are all to perish with the using, after the commandments and doctrines of men. Which things have indeed a sure wisdom in all and will worship, and humility, and neglecting of the body, not in any honor to the satisfying of the flesh. Chapter 3. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, and not on things on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, 
and covetousness, which is idolatry. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience, in the which ye also walked some time when ye lived in them. But now ye also put off all these, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another, and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body. And be ye thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever do ye, in word or deed, do all in the name of Lord Jesus, of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Wives, submit yourselves unto your husbands, as it is fit in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives, and be not bitter against them. Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing unto the Lord. Fathers, provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. Servants, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, not with eye service as men pleases, but in singleness of heart, fearing God. And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as the Lord, and not unto men. Knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Christ. But he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he hath done, and there is no respect of persons. Chapter 4 Masters, give unto your servants that which is just and equal, knowing that ye also have a master in heaven. Continue in prayer, and watch in the same with thanksgiving, with all praying also for, for us, that God would open unto us a door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ, for which I am also in bonds, that I may make it manifest as I ought to speak. Walk in wisdom toward them that are without, redeeming the time. Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. All my state shall Tychicus declare unto you, who is a beloved brother and a faithful minister and fellow servant in the Lord, whom I have sent unto you for the same purpose, that he might know your state and comfort your heart. With Onesimus, a faithful and beloved brother, who is one of you, they shall make known unto you all things which are done here. Aristarchus, my fellow prisoner, saluteth you, and Marcus, sister's son to Barnabas, touching whom ye receive commandments. If he come unto you, receive him. And Jesus, which is called Justice, who are of the circumcision, these only are my fellow workers unto the kingdom of God, which have been a comfort unto me. Epaphras, which is one of you, a servant of Christ, saluteth you, always laboring fervently for you in prayers, that ye may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. For I bear him record that he hath a great zeal for you, and them that are Laodicea, and them in Hierapolis. Luke, the beloved physician, and Demas greet you. Salute the brethren which are in Laodicea, and Nymphus, and the church which is in his house. And when this epistle is read among you, cause that it be read also in the church of the Laodiceans, and that ye likewise read the epistle from Laodicea. And say to Archippus, Take heed to the ministry which thou hast received in the Lord, that thou fulfill it. The salutation by the hand of me, Paul. Remember my bonds. Grace be with you. Amen. God be the glory. Amen. Well, we're still in the book of Numbers on our regular reading. And today we're going to do chapters 24. And we're going to do tomorrow's chapters also, which is chapter 25. We're going to do it today. Chapter 24, Balaam's third and fourth message. 
And chapter 25, the Israelites worship Baal. Chapter 24, Balaam's third and fourth message. Balak said to Balaam, come on, let's try another place. Maybe God will let you curse Israel from there. So he took Balaam to Mount Peor, overlooking the desert north of the Dead Sea. Balaam said, build seven altars here, then bring me seven bulls and seven rams. After Balak had done what Balaam asked, he sacrificed the bull and a ram on each altar. Balaam was sure that the Lord would tell him to bless Israel again. So he did not use any magic to find out what the Lord wanted him to do, as he did the first two times. Instead, he looked out toward the desert and saw the tribes of Israel camped below. Just then, God's spirit took control of him, and Balaam said, I am the son of Beor, and my words are true, so listen to my message. It comes from the Lord, the God all-powerful. I bowed down to him and saw a vision of Israel. People of Israel, your camp is lovely. It's like a grove of palm trees or a garden beside a river. You are like tall aloe trees that the Lord has planted, or like cedars growing near water. You and your descendants will prosper like an orchid beside a stream. Your king will rule with power and be a greater king than Agag the Amalekite, with the strength of the wild ox. Go led you out. Oh, excuse me. Excuse me, Lord. God led you out of Egypt. You will defeat your enemies, shooting them with arrows and crushing their bones. Like a lion, you lie down, resting after an attack. Who would dare disturb you? Anyone who blesses you will be blessed. Anyone who curses you will be cursed. When Balak heard this, he was so furious that he pounded his fist against his hand and said, I called you here to place a curse on my enemies, and you blessed them three times. Leave now and go home. I told you I would pay you, but since the Lord didn't let you do what I asked, you won't be paid. Balaam answered, I told your messengers that even if you offered me a, pla a palace full of silver and gold, I would still obey the Lord. And I explained that I would only say what he told me. So I'm going back home, but I'm leaving you with a warning about what the Israelites will someday do to your nation. And this is Balaam's fourth message. Balaam said, I am the son of Beor, and my words are true. So listen to my message. My knowledge comes from God Most High, the Lord All-Powerful. I bowed down to him and saw a vision of Israel. What I saw in my vision hasn't happened yet, but someday a king of Israel will appear like a star. He will wipe out you Moabites and destroy those tribes who live in the desert. Israel will conquer Edom and capture the land of that enemy nation. The king of Israel will rule and destroy the survivors of every town there. And I saw this vision about the Amalekites. Their nation is now great, but it will someday disappear forever. And this is what I saw about the Kenites. They think they are safe living among the rocks, but they will be wiped out when Assyria conquers them. No one can survive if God plans destruction. Ships will come from Cyprus, bringing people who will invade the lands of Assyria and Eva. But finally, Cyprus itself will be ruined. After Balaam finished, he started home, and Balak also left. Chapter 25, The Israelites Worship Baal While the Israelites were camped at Acacia, some of the men had sex with Moabite women. These women then invited the men to ceremonies where sacrifices were offered to their gods. The men ate the meat from the sacrifices and worshipped the Moabite gods. The Lord was angry with Israel because they had worshipped the god Baal Peor. So he said to Moses, Take the Israelite leaders who are responsible for this and have them killed in front of my sacred tent where everyone can see. Maybe then I will stop being angry with the Israelites. Moses told Israel's officials, Each of you must put to death any of your men who worship Baal. Later, Moses and the people were at the sacred tent crying when one of the Israelite men brought a Midianite woman to meet his family. Phinehas, the grandson of Aaron, the priest, saw the couple and left the crowd. He found a spear and followed the man into his tent, where he ran the spear through the man in and into the woman's stomach. The Lord immediately stopped punishing Israel with a deadly disease. But 20,000, 24,000 Israelites had already died. 
The Lord said to Moses, In my anger, I would have wiped out the Israelites if Phineas had not been faithful to me. But instead of punishing them, I forgave them. So because of the loyalty that Phineas showed, I solemnly promise that he and his descendants will always be my priests. The Israelite man that was killed was Zimri, son of Salu, who was one of the leaders of the Simeon tribe. And the Midianite woman killed with him was Cosby, the daughter of the Midianite clan leader named Zer. The Lord told Moses, the Midianites are now enemies of Israel, so attack and defeat them. They tricked the people of Israel into worshipping their god at Peor, and they are responsible for the death of Cosby, the daughter of one of their own leaders. God be the glory. God be the glory tomorrow. I mean, Saturday, God's willing will be chapter 26. The Israelites are counted a second time. I love you all with the love of the Lord. You all have yourself a beautiful day. And uh, please love your loved ones. Tell them that you love them. Tell um, them about Father God, who's our Heavenly Father. He's also uh, Jesus Christ in the flesh. They're one. And the Holy Ghost that dwells within you. It's part of him. That's a part of him that's left in you. I love you all with the love of the Lord. God loves you more. You all have yourself a blessed day. Bye-bye. Bye, little ones. Bye, family members. God bless you. Bye-bye.